welcome to my channel again and thank you for watching my videos so today we will be talking about some of the best practices on web development architecture in this late 2020 and we will go through some of the steps or some of the practices that you can follow so before starting the video i want to start with my little bit of background on how i've been practicing web development it's been five years and more that i have uh, I have worked with web development and, uh, and right now I'm currently working with a fintech company in London and the web trends here are growing day by day. Uh, the companies are becoming more cloud oriented. So do you even remember when was the first web application created? In the early 90s, a guy called Tim Berners-Lee created HTML so that he can share uh, documents and videos over internet. We have come a lot more far from what we had at 90s. Let's talk about these four special things that I think is one of the best practices that you should be following on web development architecture. Number one, single page application. So when you say single page application or SPA, it does not always mean like something using fancier like uh, Angular or React. A single page application can also be built on top of vanilla JavaScript. So you can use your JavaScript and use some AJAX libraries in order to build your uh, front-end application. The basic concept behind uh, single web page application or single page application is that your website or the front-end loads once. So that means your request is being sent in the background of the application and the page does not need to load every time you hit something on the page. So you click a button, your entire page does not have to load, right? It's just a simple request that's, that is sent from the front end to the server. There are many major benefits of creating a single page application. One being most of the popular, which is reducing the cost in server. Because you don't have to load the entire page again and again, you are, you are automatically reducing a lot of load on your server. So if you are uh, hosting a very huge volume of user application, then it will dramatically reduce uh, the number of requests or the number, uh, the amount of payload that it has to return to your user. The other major benefit that you will get from this is you are isolating your front-end code with your back-end code. Most of the time, your back-end logic will be complex. I'm not saying that the front-end logic does not have to be complex or it won't be complex but in most of the application the backend logic is normally complex and it's always better that the backend logic stays on the server side programming so as i told that uh, it's not necessary that you have to use angular or something similar to create a single page application but there are benefits by using those uh, uh, frameworks because they, uh, these frameworks will uh, format or architect your code in a component-based uh, logic, which is much more easier to manage uh, when the application gets larger and larger. Uh, so number two, uh, it's APIs, RESTful APIs. So there is a difference between RESTful APIs and just saying APIs, because when you say RESTful, uh, it's the standard of creating those APIs. Uh, we can also think of an API um, like a bridge like you create an API then you can access that API through a mobile application you can access that API through a desktop application or you can access that API using a web application that we recently talked about the SPA single page application so if you build any application through API based architecture you already get that kind of benefit other benefit is that by developing your application in an API based approach, releasing a new version or updates becomes far more easier than what it is if you build it, you know, the old way. The other advantage of uh, following and restful approach is your API becomes self documented automatically but remember the term that only if you build your apis in a restful approach you can find a whole lot of documentation on what uh, actually a restful api uh, means and just calling it an api versus a restful api because uh, the rest standards tells you to follow 
the naming convention, the URL convention, uh, and also the various method types, the get, post, put, or delete, these method types um, to be properly used while developing it. So if, you if a developer follows the proper approach of developing RESTful APIs, the system is automatically being documented as well. Uh, since API is server related thing, there are also server related benefits on it. Uh, load balancing, which might be a new term for most of you guys uh, watching this video, uh, it becomes far more easier when you're using uh, web APIs. So number three, Docker, or you can say containerized JSON. So you write a Docker file, which is uh, steps of scripted uh, commands which will install files or install which will uh, take care of all the installation steps in your uh, web application deployment so let's say you want a Ubuntu service and you want Apache to be installed on top of it you want um, some of the PHP or my MySQL libraries to be installed or you want anything extra Linux libraries that you want to be in that one that needs to be installed on the server then with Docker, each and every steps becomes scripted and recorded on the file. That way, any developer can open up the file and then know that what exactly the version is being used, whether it's a, a PHP or MySQL, and uh, uh, and it's much more easier to upgrade them as well. With Docker, it's not just about the server, but it's also about the local system. So uh, your remote server does not need to be different than of your local system because you are using docker you can easily install it on your local system and you get the exact replica of your server that's online docker is also an example to documentation as a key to success because you are documenting every steps of what is installed on your server um, it allows more clarity on uh, how the server is working so we've come to the final uh, fourth thing that we will be discussing on this video uh, which is microservices the reason people uh, are going moving towards microservices more and more is uh, related to most of the things but may I uh, the major two things that I think is uh, reducing the cost by allowing uh, those features to be scaled independently and number two is reducing the uh, complexity over these application because we as a developer we try to reduce the work and in while do you, while reducing the work we forget to keep the application simple we try to write a function or a class that is usable in many places and starting from one to two to three it starts getting complicated because it's being used in so many places the secret ingre ingredient to go towards microservices is modularity the main reason why you want to do that is so that in future if you have to s completely separate those projects then it's much more easier because it's already modular try to make your um, project structure as modular as possible uh, we can we, we can find a lot of articles on how you can do it on the specific framework that you're following uh, but yeah uh, that's the secret ingredient the final conclusion of this uh, whole chapter or whole video is that every every month or every three months there's something new coming up in the market and uh, I have heard like a long time ago somebody told me that don't go into this computer field don't go into this field because every every time there is something new then you have to keep learning and well in this, in the beginning I was also I was also afraid of this thing but later I realized that every time there is something new it came in order to make your life easier it might be the developers life easier it might be some product owners life easier so that the cost is reduced um, blah 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 but at the end of the day it makes your life easier you have to spend like maybe a week sometimes a month to learn this new technology or new library that is available but that a week or a month of time that you spend will will give you like a lot of more benefits in coming years 
So yeah, keep learning, keep enjoying what you do. Thank you.